Wait, remember Hot Wheels Battle Force 5? It was the 3D animated high-speed cartoon series based off a collectible toy car line that you can buy at most stores that have a toy section. Well, if not, there were Matchbox cars too. For me as a kid, Hot Wheels were everything. Here are my literal buckets from my childhood of all my collected cars. My parents loved that I was so into them because back then, they were all around 97 cents to a dollar per car. So it was very cheap to keep me entertained. I was obsessed from the cars to setting up the tracks or having the car wash multi-story center, the shark jump, and who could forget having one of these carpets? Oh, those days of playing with Hot Wheels on that carpet, simpler days. But we aren't talking about the toys today as much as I would want to. Instead, we are looking into one of the many Hot Wheels animated cartoon properties that have spawned from the franchise. Today, we take a look at Battle Force 5. Find out what happens when you take a toy, make it a show, and then produce new toys based based on the show, based on the toys. So if you enjoy the video, you better subscribe, especially if you think I should look into other Hot Wheels cartoons. No, wait, no! Before I give you the breakdown of what this show was, let me just reiterate, this show is based off of this, a toy car. Keep that in mind. Also, you've heard of the term multiverse, I'm sure. Well, there is one in this show, and it was created by this character's alien race. I can't stress this enough. This show gets pretty wild with its story and plot, and this is just the tip of the iceberg here. Our story follows Vert Wheeler, voiced by Mark Hildreth, who, when driving in the desert, finds himself at a life alter moment, a new world or worlds open up for him with dimensions called the Battle Zones, and is met with an alien from a race called the Sentience. Her name is Sage, voiced by Kira Tozer, and her whole goal is to have Vert become the leader of an eventual group of drivers to embark on an epic quest of uh, finding keys? Well, kind of, at least at the start of the series. The rest of Battle Force 5 is assembled once Sage gathers the other following humans. Agura, voiced by Kathleen Barr. Zoom, voiced by Alessandro Giuliani, Stanford, voiced by Noel Johansson, Sherman, voiced by Brian Drummond, and Spinner, voiced by Gabe Kuth. Now, if you find yourself good at math, that makes the full team, minus Sage, since she's more of the string puller than a member, to a team of six. But the show is called Battle Force uh, 5. But that isn't a reference to the team members themselves, but instead, the cars, uh, or sorry, the Hot Wheels, since Sherman and Spinner share a Hot Wheel or, a or whatever uh, together. So when and later on in the series, there are other members like Tez, also voiced by Noel Johansson, and AJ, voiced by Michael Dobson, ends up joining the Battle Force 5 team. It for some reason stays a Battle Force 5 instead of upgrading to 6 or, or 7 in the name, but regardless of that, the story is the real focus here in the show rather than the semantics. The vehicles themselves are very much tricked out with some very impressive weaponry that aids them in their first quest of finding battle keys. These artifacts that open up portals that lead you through different dimensions in the multiverse. These areas are known as battle zones and the ones who hold the keys can use them to reopen and close portals. So they are pretty important as you can tell. But it's not as easy as just going and finding them because Sage probably could have just done that on their own. So the reason she has assembled this all-star team of people who can drive is because there is evil afoot. Make that a feat actually since there are really two evil factions that stand as competition to the BF5. That's short for battle Force 5. First, one of Fur and Fluff, the Vandals, led by Captain Callus, voiced by Colin Murdoch, who currently occupy the Blue Sentient Planet, where Sage's race was originally from, as well as there's one of Metal, the Sark, which are led by Zemerick, voiced by Michael Dobson. They are an alien race of robots that currently occupy the Red Sentient Planet. Yes, in addition to the Blue Sentients, there are also Red Sentients, who are the counterpart to the Blue Sentients and helped form the multiverse together as well as the keys and all these zones. So yeah, there is quite a bit going on here in what on the surface is a Hot Wheels TV show. Y'all stop talking now. Hot Wheels Battle Force 5. Is that the pizza that you sneezed on? 
With the success that Hot Wheels was having in the early 2000s, thanks to not only sales of the toy cars and playsets, but now also their animated films like the Acceleracer series and World Race, it was clear to Mattel that there was a larger market for Hot Wheels than anyone had ever imagined. I mean, they're just cars, but instead of going the route of making a show just based on racing and being grounded in reality, there was an affinity to adding in a bunch of fantastical sci-fi elements mixing in with the action genre booming in cartoons at the time, to give a lot more story to it all. This would be an American and Canadian collaboration to make Battle Force 5 an actual show, with Mattel working together with Nerdcore Entertainment and Nelvana to bring this idea to life. So there is a reason why this show looks so similar to other shows like Slug Terra and Stormhawks. Now, it's not really more interesting than that in terms of the production. It would premiere on Cartoon Network in the United States on August 29, 2009, officially, but also having a sneak peek drop with two episodes several days before on August 24, 2009. Now, like I said, there were other Hot Wheels shows and movies before this, not really being a new concept for the Hot Wheels brand. In fact, all the way back in 1969, one year after Hot Wheels would hit store shelves, the cartoon just titled Hot Wheels would premiere. It wouldn't be until the early 90s where another series was tried again called Heroes on Hot Wheels, which technically wasn't a Hot Wheels show at all, at least at first. Originally, it was a French cartoon that was dubbed in English and transformed into a Hot Wheels show sold on VHS tapes that would come with an exclusive Hot Wheels car. But from the success of making the series a bit more different, World Racers and Acceleracers would kick off the appeal of a Hot Wheels franchise for fans to attach themselves to, or for streamers to watch on their streams. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I really, I can't. Yeah, it's a good time. But the real question is for the show, does it all work? Is it a good time? Taking the most basic thing that makes a Hot Wheel a Hot Wheel by having cars just be involved, but the real story being about alien power struggles. Does it equal out into a show that cohesively makes sense? Well, I'll say that I was pleasantly surprised by the show. I wasn't going into it with too much thought other than having seen some of the other Hot Wheels movies. And by the end of the show, I thought it was pretty cool that this fun multiversal alien concept was as enthralling as it was. And yeah, the cars are cool too, but in all honesty, the cars are the thing that took the backseat for me here. I think having the main enemies in the show be this tribal-esque faction of vandals and these futuristic robots kind of adding this cool duality of time, where humans are just kind of caught in the middle of it here. In season two, it really ramped up the fun for me. I think the story here gets elevated a lot more dealing with the red and blue sentience specifically. Together, these two sentient races come together forming a truce to not be at war with one another, but Kratos, voiced by Brian Drummond, decided that he wasn't for that and reignited the war. Zemeric, his literal own creation, turned against him and his followers, imprisoning them so he can take over, and Kratos plans on freeing them. Yes, there is another team opposite the Battle Force 5 now called the Red Sentient 5, but here's a fun fact, Sage is Kratos' twin sister, and in order to stop them at one point, she froze all the Red Sentients minus her brother and his team to stop another oncoming war, which caused him to retaliate in very extreme ways that are explored in the show and leaves Kratos now extremely angry at both Zemeric and Sage. The show fully goes into some pretty interesting conflicts and storytelling mixed with some pretty entertaining and cool action that really worked for me. I liked how deep the lore was written and how the plot felt like it was constantly building up rather than having pacing issues or having a lack of direction. Even down to the little things in the show, I appreciate the world building approach they took in crafting the story. These larger vehicles, the Mobis, that act as a power source for Sage, as some sort of charging station for her, and even come back later on in the group's search for data logs. These characters, mainly aside from the humans, are really complex in their backgrounds and their individual stories, leading through various plot points, even going as far as doing a whole thing about the enemy of my enemy is temporarily my friend until we are enemies again thing, when Zemeric needs Battle Force 5's help, and in return helps give them the locations of the rest of Kratos' Red Sentient 5 to aid them in their conflict. Where this show could have easily been a toy sales vessel, which in part, of course it was, it went above and beyond to deliver a strong narrative first and foremost rather than becoming one big advertisement for your parents' wallet. It felt like there was a lot of passion for this story from the writers, and that while there was a lot going on at once towards the end of the show, it was all able to still keep a strong focus on the story to not become convoluted. But with that being said, 
there was a toy market to this show, as well as the show itself ended in a way that left viewers pondering the unanswered questions, feeling like the show was cancelled with no conclusion. But technically, it wasn't, and let's dig into that. It was a total team victory, guys. We all won this. Hot Wheels Battle Force 5. Own it. Nice move, Zoom. Now, for the series, a major point was the toy market outside of just regular Hot Wheels, which have always been and will always be on store shelves. It's the most consistent thing in my life every time I walk into a Target and see them, and that may be the saddest thing that I've ever said about myself. Regardless, the toys for the series were already coming out alongside of the show, but going forward for season two, which had the subtitle to it called Fuse, played heavily into the toys as well, where the concept in the show was about being able to fuse their cars together to form new power powerful vehicles with cool new designs, which, yep, you guessed it, this translated to the toys as well. Heck, even McDonald's got on board with some cheaper and quality versions of their own. But nevertheless, the toys seem to be everywhere. If you're still interested in getting the toys outside of places like eBay or other online sellers, for whatever reason, since 2021, Battle Force 5 toys have been showing up in some discount stores, specifically 99 cent only stores, but being sold for more than 98 cents, but not by much. Just an interesting thing to see pop up after a decade since the show came to an end. After two seasons of the show, Battle Force 5 would come to an end in 2011, wrapping up a lot of the major storylines for the show, but not particularly everything, leaving fans of the show with a handful of questions and not really any answers, leaving off with a hint regarding the Ancient Ones. Well, towards the end of 2012, the series would live on to answer these questions. Again, kind of. There was a special called Battle Force 5 Full Revolution that would serve as the true ending to the series, offering a lot of answers to the questions left. But if you were a fan of this show and didn't live in Latin America, then I'm sorry, you never got to see the series finale premiere. Why? Well, it may be because the ratings and interest or sales of the toys were still very high in Latin America as opposed to the other markets around the world where the show was shown. While an English version did premiere in Latin America, it has never been released elsewhere, not even on a DVD-only type of deal, leaving fans wanting this to be officially released from Mattel. But based on the time past since and the franchise being over for a decade, it seems like no plans of an actual release are on the horizon. But who knows, weirder things have happened. If you are interested in checking out the full special, there is an English subtitled version that I will link down below thanks to the channel Tesla's Cube. So major shout out to them for giving access to finish up the franchise for those who have been waiting to see it. But if you're wanting more than just the show and the toys, there was a Battle Force 5 video game Game that came out in 2009 for the Nintendo Wii and DS from Activision that deals with Vert going after the Infinity Key that the Vandals got a hold of, as well as finding the rest of the Battle Force 5 team after becoming separated. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with Battle Force 5. It's a weird combination of so many things, and luckily, a lot of those things are what I like or am interested in. It has action, it has sci-fi storytelling, and it has Hot Wheels. And what more could you ask for? Maybe an official release of the English version of the finale special. That would be cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on Hot Wheels Battle Force 5 and if you'd like to see the end of the series officially come out in some accessible way. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.